Hello viewers, today we will discuss the topic labor markets and coping mechanisms in Africa. North and Sub-Saharan Africa are experiencing a demographic youth bulge. However, there is a severe mismatch between the skills possessed by young workers and those demanded by employers. The education system needs to be structured to build the skills needed to compete globally. The labor market requires leadership and it needs real change. Dealing effectively with Africa's massive unemployment problem and the harmful effects of frequent strikes on productivity and economic growth will require major structural reforms in the labor market and its institutions. Concept of labor market A market exists whenever there is a good or service for which there are both buyers and sellers. In the labor market, labor services are exchanged and those negotiations occurring between buyers and sellers partly determine the placement of workers in jobs with specified wages, benefits and conditions of employment. The demand for labor comes from employers and is derived from their need to employ workers to produce goods and services. Firms choose their staffing levels according to a number of factors, including the cost of labor, the productivity of the workforce, the current and anticipated level of production, and the price that the firm can command for its output. Job opportunities arise when firms expand their operations and when Firms replace employees who are leaving their jobs, such as retirees. Labor market, like markets for commodities, existed since almost the beginning of exchange economy. However, its distinct identity came to be recognized only in recent stage of the evolution of economic thinking. The figure 1 shows the total unemployment in millions and the unemployment rate in percentage for the world from 2003 to 2012 and projections till 2018. The total unemployment is depicted through bars while the unemployment rate is shown through the red line graph. It can be seen that the total unemployment was a little less than 190 million in 2003 but had risen to more than 190 million in 2012. It fell to as low as 170 million in 2007, after which it started to increase, reaching almost 200 million in 2009 and then stabilized in coming years. As per projections, it is expected to show an increasing trend, reaching around 210 million in 2018. The unemployment rate can be read on the right-hand axis. It has also shown many fluctuations starting from around 6.4% in 2003 and then reaching a downward peak in 2007 and again rising and reaching a level of 6.2% in 2009 and 6% in 2012. It is projected to stick around the same level in 2018. Labor Market Trends in Africa The labor markets and the way in which their various segments are connected have peculiarities in each African country. But by examining the common characteristics of labor market segmentation across the continent, one can acknowledge the specificity of country level. The labor market in North Africa is dualistic and unequal. On the one side, there are large firms and formal sector workers who earn at least the minimum wage and enjoy high levels of social protection. On the other side, there are small firms and the remainder of the labor force who are unemployed or informally employed, generally under poor working conditions. Across the region, the labor market is characterized by low labor force participation rates 
at below 50% together with high levels of unemployment. The sub-Saharan labor market is fragmented with characteristics differing between urban and rural areas and between formal and informal sectors. Sub-Saharan Africa had the highest labor force participation rate of all regions estimated at 70.9% compared with a global average of 63.5% in 2014. In addition, unemployment at 7.7% in 2014 is expected to remain stable through 2018. In terms of youth, the youth unemployment rate is comparatively low in relation to the adult rate with a youth to adult ratio of 1.9 the lowest of all regions worldwide. Indeed, the youth unemployment rate was 11.8% in 2014. East Asia and South Asia had lower rates at 10.5% and 10% respectively. The Table 1 shows the labour market situation in Sub-Saharan Africa in terms of the labour force participation rate, unemployment rate, and annual growth rate of employment across two time periods of 2009 and 2012. Also, segregation is done into several categories in terms of sex and age. The labor force participation rate has remained consistent for all categories for the two time periods. It stood at around 70% as a whole, 87.4% for adult male, around 71% for adult female and around 54% for youth in both periods. The total unemployment rate was around 7.7% across the two time periods. For males, it declined from 7.1 to 6.9% in 2012 and for females, the unemployment rate was consistent at around 8%. The youth unemployment rate was 12% in 2009 and declined to 11.9% in 2012. For adults, it remained consistent at 6% for both time periods. The total annual employment growth increased to 3.1% in 2012. For males and females, this figure stood at 3.1% in 2012. The youth employment growth increased from 2.1 to 2.7% and for adults it increased from 3 to 3.2%. Challenges in labour markets in Africa Africa's labour market challenges are well known. A major contributor to this is the current state of labour market institutions and the regulatory environment. In this context, several factors are to blame. Informality is persistent. A vast majority of workers in sub-Saharan Africa find themselves in informal employment. According to various studies, the informal economy in the region contributes 50-80% to of GDP, 60-80% to of employment and 90% of new jobs. 9 out of 10 workers in both rural and urban areas are estimated to hold only informal jobs. The share of informality varies across the region. Informal employment is lower in southern Africa where it ranges from 32.7% in South Africa to 43.9% in Namibia. Vulnerable Employment there are some signs that employment creation in Northern Africa is strengthening. This has led to the first decline in incidence of unemployment since 2011. However, more than one in three workers are in vulnerable employment. In Sub-Saharan Africa also, the incidence of vulnerable employment remains pervasive at almost 70% of total employed against a global average of 46.3%. More importantly, this share shows no sign of decreasing in the foreseeable future, casting doubts on the region's ability to reduce informality 
and improve job quality. The vulnerable employment rate at 76.6% in 2014 was significantly higher than the global average of 45.3%. Female vulnerable employment was considerably higher than the rate for males at 84.3% compared with 70.1% for males in 2014. Skills Mismatch According to the World Bank, despite the increase in enrollments in most sub-Saharan African countries, especially at the primary level, the out-of-school population was very low in educational attainment. 36% of the 15 to 24-year-olds in sub-Saharan Africa have never attended school. Only 28% have completed primary school and only 8% have completed secondary school. This means that out of about two-thirds of all young workers in the labor market, 95 million young people lack the basic skills needed to be competitive in the labor force. The table too shows the labor market indicators for youth for Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa in 1995 and 2005. The African youth unemployment rate remained same at 19.5 for both periods. However, it increased to 18% for Sub-Saharan Africa and declined to 29.5% in 2005 for North Africa. The ratio of youth to adult unemployment was around 3% for all regions, only that it increased from 3.3 to 3.5% in North Africa but declined for Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa to 3% in 2005. The youth share of total employment declined from 59.3% to 57.4% in Africa. For Sub-Saharan Africa, it declined from 61.1% to 59.5% and for North Africa, it declined from 54 to 50%. The youth employment to population ratio was 49.6, 56.4 and 26.7% in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa but declined to 47.9, 53.8 and 25.8% respectively in 2005. Lack of social protection Most people in informal work are in low-skill jobs exposed to inadequate and unsafe working conditions with inadequate training opportunities, low wages and long working hours and no social protection. There are also cases of uneven social protection. The coverage of social protection systems including social assistance is uneven and fragmented in the Northern African region. Pension coverage varies across the region reaching 30 to 40 percent of the workforce in countries such as Algeria, Egypt, Morocco and Tunisia, but reaching a very small proportion of the population in countries such as Sudan. Working Poverty and Inequality Sub-Saharan Africa has the world's highest poverty levels and although poverty has declined in recent years, it has fallen at a much slower pace than in other regions. Working poverty is gradually declining. The share of workers in poverty, that is those living on less than US$3.10 per day PPP stood at 64% in 2015 and is expected to decline only slightly in the next two years. Furthermore, one-third of all workers are in extreme poverty. Also, 24% people employed find themselves below the poverty threshold of US$3.10 per day PPP. Child labor Child labor remains high across the region with 9.2 million child laborers reported in Northern Africa and the Middle East. In Egypt, Around 1.6 million children aged 5 to 17 are considered child laborers, 
in Sudan, it is estimated that 4% of the labor force is composed of children aged 6 to 9 years old, representing some 47% of children. According to the latest ILO Global and Regional Estimates, the Sub-Saharan African region has the highest incidence of child labor with 1 in 5 children involved. Coping Mechanisms to Overcome Challenges Coping mechanisms are the strategies and policies adopted by the government authorities so as to manage and overcome the challenges in the labor market. Need to reshape policy initiatives Employment growth remains weak and unemployment continues to rise, particularly among young job seekers and large number of potential workers remain discouraged and out of the labor market. Those that are unemployed are facing longer waiting times to secure employment with a corresponding increase in the mismatch between the skills and employability of these job seekers and the needs of firms and the labour market. To cope with this, the authorities can pursue policy initiatives to create more jobs. Address labour market hiring uncertainty through better policy coordination. Hiring uncertainty also contributes to persistent unemployment. Estimates show that up to one-third of the rise in unemployment can be attributed to employers' uncertainty regarding the economic and labour market outlook as employers find it difficult to anticipate new sources of growth. In this context, lack of policy coordination discourages both investments in real capacity and hiring of new workers. This further supports the recommendation for a less rigid labour market which would help to boost aggregate demand and reduce hiring uncertainty, which are both important to stimulate job creation. Address inactivity and skills mismatch through active labour market policies. In Africa, potential workers facing bleak labour market prospects do not enter or remain in the labour market. These individuals are not included among the unemployed but their lack of participation in the labour market is, in many respects, equally as detrimental as increased unemployment in terms of foregone economic potential. With potential workers remaining out of the labour force and the unemployed experiencing longer spells of joblessness, on average, the risk of skills degradation and obsolescence is on the rise. Accordingly, it is essential to improve the functioning of the labour market by adopting measures that match workers with available employment opportunities, incentivize, discourage workers to re-engage in the labour market and promote skills development. Focus on diversifying productive capacity. Development requires a strategy to diversify the economic base and enhance the ability of sustainable enterprises to create quality jobs. It is crucial to avoid a concentration of economic growth in a few export-oriented sectors with limited links to the rest of the economy. Economic diversification policies, measures to facilitate formalization and expansion of enterprises and the enforcement of labour standards can all contribute to broad-based development and promotion of decent work. Strengthening Labour Market Institutions Labour and social protection institutions are important ingredients of economic growth, quality jobs and human development. It is not possible to achieve economic diversification without active measures to tackle low productivity in agriculture and small and medium-sized enterprise, poor working condition traps and high rates of informality. Wage setting mechanisms and labour regulations need to be properly designed and attention must be given to implementation capacity. 
well-designed collective bargaining can have positive impacts on income distribution while also tackling informality and low productivity traps. Extend well-designed social protection. There is evidence that social protection helps to reduce the incidence of poverty, inequalities and vulnerable employment. Well-designed social protection enhances individual capabilities to access better jobs. In addition, social protection can boost economic growth and quality job creation. Much depends on the responsiveness of social protection to changing economic conditions. Establishing an efficient funding base for social protection is crucial. Finally, it is important to combine social protection with a set of policies that promote a supportive environment for enterprises and job creation. This includes simplifying administrative procedures for the self-employed in order to facilitate formal entrepreneurship. Another successful measure has been the provision of additional incentives for benefits recipients, including job seekers, to receive training and take on work. Ensure balanced income development to avoid harmful inequalities. Widening income inequalities may erode social cohesion and intensify social unrest. It is therefore essential to reinforce labor market institutions which can improve the market distribution of incomes between labor and capital. This can be done by facilitating dialogue between employers and workers, enforcing labor laws and standards, as well as implementing well-designed social protection in order to ensure more balanced income distribution in labor markets. Decent work should be a central goal. Sustainable development is not possible without making progress on the employment and decent work agenda. By putting in place policies and institutions that help create more and better jobs, the process of development will be facilitated. Conversely, economic growth is not sustainable when it is based on poor and unsafe working conditions, suppressed wages, and rising working poverty and inequalities. In addition to their impact on economic growth and jobs, Social protection and dialogue are integral components of development. Acquiring correct skills. This offers an unrivaled opportunity for economic and social development if new workers can find places in the productive sectors of the economy. However, it could also present a significant risk if Africa fails to create sufficient economic and employment opportunities. Education reforms are essential to improving the skills and problem-solving capacity of Africa's workers. Perhaps the most urgent reform is to increase the emphasis on post-primary education. Conclusion There is a clear need for change. There is an urgent need to tackle the abuse of temporary workers including through labor broking arrangements. The current system is a significant barrier to job creation and carries enormous cost for businesses and government. So, skill shortages within the labor force should be addressed. This will require a rethink of the country's existing vocational training system. With this, we come to the end of today's lecture. We will meet next time with another interesting topic. Till then, Take care. Goodbye.